Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. We are coming to you from the National Restaurant Association show in Chicago. I am with the CEO and founder of Seven Shifts, Jordan Bush. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Sean. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited. I can't believe this is the first time that I've ever had you on Restaurant Influencers. You have such a powerful platform that helps move our industry forward. One point over, almost 1.5 million restaurant workers use Seven Shifts. That's right. Cali Barbecue, our restaurant in San Diego, we use Seven Shifts and- Thank for, you. Well, thank you for empowering our team, our management team and our staff to have a tool that allows us to make work, work easy. No problem, no problem. Can you share a little bit for me the journey of Seven Shifts, being here now in the booth, the fact that, what year is this for you? Oh, uh, so we started the company in 2014. 2014, so all 10 years, a decade. So it's, so it's been a decade, so this is an exciting moment here. We're wow. celebrating a decade. Celebrating a decade. Um, and not only that, so my wife who's, who started the company with me, her name's Andre, she's here at the show. She has not been to a trade show since we were three people. No way. And. She was sort of like, you know, I really want to see what this like these trade shows are all about. So I said, you got to come to the Super Bowl of restaurant trade shows and be prepared to be overwhelmed. Yes. And for your feet to hurt. Yes. So the she feet hurt. Yeah. She did. You didn't give her the comfortable shoes. Well, she, <laughs> she, she she's got good shoes. I think she's got good shoes. She'll she'll manage. But uh, she's excited. She's excited. So from three people. How many now? We're over 300. Over 300. That's absolutely incredible. Started in Saskatoon. That's right. Yep. In Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Say it three Sask times fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to say. <laughs> Jordan, tell me about the work that you guys do surveying the industry. I think one of the coolest things we obviously this is a storytelling podcast. We care about this industry. We care about moving the industry forward. You guys do such a great job with the data from learning about what do workers really need. Can you share a little bit about the insights of, of the surveys that you guys have been doing? Yeah, so uh, we, every year we, we, run a, we run a survey where we ask employees a variety of questions around the restaurant industry, their work, things they value. And we did, a, we did another survey and we polled a bunch of our workers. And you know, the, the insights, some of them were pretty similar to what we had in prior years. And some of the ones that surface to the top are not super surprising in terms of what do employees value the most in the industry and their work. And the number one thing, flexibility, is really surf comes to the top, and that's has been said. Uh, you know, that was in the top three last year yeah. as well. Um, you know, pay and camaraderie, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and on the flip side, Sean, what's really interesting is if you look at the reasons why people quit restaurant work. Aside from seasonality, things going back to school, all these other, you know, kind of seasonal reasons, it's really around people quitting their manager. And, you know, we've heard the saying, you don't quit, you know, you don't quit your job, you quit your manager. And it's entirely true. It's 50% of people in this survey say that's why they quit their restaurant job. And then following that is they quit because they didn't have that connection, that camaraderie with like their peers, and that's something that they were missing. And then followed by low pay. But if you were to ask a number of people in the even in the industry, they would probably say, well, low pay is the biggest reason. It's yeah. actually not. For me, what's fascinating is the way that you enable operators to get that kind of feedback. Can you talk about that? Because I think when you go from the way that the industry used to be with a, a, pe a pencil and paper, which is why you developed seven shifts, to what you've built now where every single shift we can get feedback on how well that shift went. Yeah, so part of the part of the beginnings of Seven Shifts was just build a really core great solution that could help folks with the basic needs of scheduling. As we evolved and focused, realize that a lot of this has to do with the employee experience. That kind of led us into this whole concept of asking for shift feedback. Yeah. And by asking for feedback, it sort of captures these blind spots that the operators don't even know that they don't know. And so really thinking, okay, well, you had someone that walked out the door. Well, 90% of restaurant operators do not do an exit interview. 
And so asking that question, do you know what happened? Do you know why they left? And the fact that no one could answer this for us meant that there was a huge opportunity to give restaurant operators insights earlier and more in real time so they have an opportunity to react. And so with our engaged product within Seven Shifts, our aim is to do exactly that. So we know we kind of categorize folks in engaged buckets or folks that are maybe becoming disengaged, but that all has to do with a bunch of inputs around how they feel about their shift, yeah. any feedback they have around the shift, um, how promptly are they posting their availability, are they communicating frequently through the mobile apps, and is that changing now? Are they giving up their Friday shifts, and that's weird because they that's when they get paid the most, are they no longer communicating as frequently, and all those things can lead to some disengagement, and those are people that we want to flag to the operators and managers to say, hey, you may want to just see how Sally or Johnny's doing. And it may just be a, a simple question, like, how are you doing? And because there are so many junior managers and first time managers in the industry, it's a really great way for us to help them kind of build that muscle of just simply asking how you're doing and kind of building some rapport with the team and making them feel heard, frankly. So obviously we put this show on because we love storytelling, we love content. You guys have done a phenomenal job on all digital platforms. You're really a leading in our industry of what to do. You and I have done TikTok videos like three years ago when no one else was even on TikTok. Uh, can you talk for me a little bit about your commitment to the social channels? Yeah, I think there's there's no question we have to be on them. Yep. I think that if we're we are targeting a a largely a demographic that are, you know, restaurant workers, teenagers, and you know, we care about how they think about our product and our brand. And the same with the operators too. And and so some people will say, well, operators aren't on some of these things. Well, they are kind of being forced to get onto these yep. things. And we're seeing more of that. And so we want to be where our, our customers are, but we also want to let them understand and feel our brand presence and what we stand for and what we're all about. Uh, because I think it's, I think it takes multiple channels to do that. Yep. I think you need all of these things that together create the persona and the image of what a company feels like to, to someone that's interacting with it that maybe doesn't use your product yet or doesn't work at the company. So. Can you bring us back to the original Seven Shifts logo? We believe ABB, always be branding. You guys made a huge announcement before the show. I can't tell you how impressed I am. Please share with the audience uh, the evolution of from the beginning to where we are today. So the, the evolution was, uh, I wish I could say it was a lot of steps to get to where we are, but it was sort of like a rip and like a rip off the bandaid yeah. uh, from 10 years ago, because our logo is 10 years, like our old logo is 10 years old. And it was really developed by a friend of mine who I went to college with, and he's a great designer and he helped kind of like start the Seven Chess brand. And if Do I you remember what was the first thing that you put the logo on? Other than a website, yeah, maybe a maybe a shirt, maybe a shirt, maybe a shirt. <laughs> like maybe I, I I etched it into like a piece of paper on or like the desk, yeah. maybe. But as we as we approach this year, and kudos to the marketing team, by the way, we have a great great marketing team that really worked together to kind of with a goal of saying, okay, we want something that is not such a departure from our existing logo, yes. but brings it up to speed, fresher, crisper, something that allows you to, us to, to kind of like feel more modern, but also behind all of that is the, is the feeling we want people to have around being close to the operators in the industry and, and kind of being in the trenches with them and sort of, you know, more of an emphasis on restaurants and teams. Yeah. And so that's why if you go to our website now, you see a lot more imagery of folks in the restaurant, in the back of house, getting their hands dirty. Like, we know that these are the people that we serve and these are the people that count on us for our product and to see a lot of value and to save time and money. And we wanna make sure that that resonates with folks, other folks that are like that, that are not using our product yet. So really big focus on like the, the kind of, the people and the, 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 the raw, I'd say the raw aspects of restaurant work. 
And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor to the show. It's Zach Oates, the founder of Ovation. Ovation is helping restaurants to improve operations with the human touch. We are a guest experience platform for multi-unit restaurants like Friendly's, Muya, PDQ, Tzatziki's, and even Cali Barbecue with thousands of others that starts with a two question survey and drives revenue, location level improvement, and guest recovery. So here's how it works. The guest answers two questions. The first one is how is your experience? And then from there, happy guests are invited to do things that are gonna drive revenue and unhappy guests share privately what went wrong. So you and your team can resolve that concern in real time. Our AI will even help you do that. Then the magic happens. We take all the public reviews. We take all the ovation feedback. We categorize it using our AI and give you detailed feedback in 34 restaurant specific categories to improve your operations. So we make sure that guests feel good, that you look good. And if you're interested in learning more, visit ovationup.com forward slash Sean, because any listener of Sean's is a friend of Ovation's. For me, it's, it's a masterclass in what B2B businesses can do with a brand and with a logo. Because a lot of the time there is a back emphasis of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the logo looks like because we're selling to operators. But operators now, people like me, we believe in the brands that we pick and we choose. And we take pride in the fact that Seven Shifts is one of those logos. For us, when you think about that, you see what's going on here at the show and you see other people wearing the logo and coming and wanting to get the shirts and wanting to get the stickers. What does that mean to you? It means it means a ton. I mean, I, I think I think we had such a great and continue to have such great loyalty from our customers who are restaurant operators and managers. And they they come by all the time and they chat with us and some of them talk about things that are working well or some things they love to see see improved. But I think that having wearing that wearing the the, the new brand feeling kind of like this refreshed feeling in in uh, in the air is like is pretty pretty great for a lot of these folks that are that are working the floor right now and honestly nothing fills your cup more than people talking about how much they love a product that you're involved in that you're working on every day yeah. it's like a chef that cooks a meal and someone says this meal is amazing you take such pride in that you take such pride in people getting value from the work that you're doing and I think that the, 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 the logo and the brand refresh sort of is like all encompassing of those things. I think it's, it's not because of that, it's sort of an and to the entire equation of what I think gives people a lot of pride in this company. Solving problems, kind of being in the trenches with the operators and feeling like we're part of that. Can you talk a little bit more about the products that you have recently released to make this more of a robust platform? Yeah, so although we started with scheduling, which yep. is my dad who was running Quiznos locations in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Saskatoon. Um, although it started there, we always had a, a longer term vision of capturing and, and helping operators solve problems across the employee life cycle and journey. So hiring, training, scheduling, paying and retaining. Yeah. And so these past few quarters, we've been really hard at work, going really deep on our tip payout product and our payroll product. And what really gives me a lot of joy and excitement and as well as the rest of the team is this past, call it six to eight months, have just been focused on making these products so simple, so easy to use that folks can onboard themselves. And I think for something as daunting as a payroll product, yes, that's really kind of scary for people in a lot of ways or people don't believe that that's true. And so we're sort of here saying, we believe operators can do more with their time if we gave them more time back. So how can we continue to make things simple, easy, better so that they can do it faster? And that sh is reflected in some of these new products that we've got. And uh, I'm super excited to, to kind of connect those parts of the journey and have them see a more unified value within the solution itself. The people, the humans at Seven Shifts, one of the things that I've always loved is the tech companies that invest in people, because it's like a magnet. When I come to the booth, every time I see you guys at the show, every time I've interacted with all, all, different, si all different sides of the company, you have an ability to attract talent that is exciting for this industry. How do you do it? 
So uh, I, I think really it comes down to we hire based on our, our behaviors, which are our core values that we have, we stay true to in the company. And I think I want to I want to sort of take a lot of these sort of ingredients of how we've built our business to help operators do the same too. So it's you kind of can see some of those come out in the engaged product and that sort of thing. But I think it really comes down to uh, that quote from Danny Meyer, which is culture is the sum of all the behaviors you champion minus the ones you tolerate. Yeah. And to me, that is could not be more true in how we look at hiring and how we think about the behaviors that we try and drive and the people that we try to attract, because ultimately that's reflected in how we build product, how we deliver it and how we think about the vision of our customers and what we're trying to do for the industry. If we could not live by that philosophy internally, we would not be able to build solutions and products yeah. for the industry. So it's really important that we stay focused on that and be really vigilant around folks that meet the behavioral criteria and the core values that we want to uphold here. Do you have any stories from any mentors recently that have told you something that have made you think differently about the future, about what you're building? Yeah, I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of really good stuff out there around how people think about long-term strategy and what we want to do for the business. Um, I think, I think really trying to, I think ultimately it comes back to what are we really good at? Where are my skills and how can I use those to best serve the industry? And sort of long term, I think that we have so much more to do here and, you know, flexing those muscles of simplicity, more kind of product led, self-serve, easy products within the, the restaurant ecosystem. Um, I think I've been listening to a lot of uh, folks talk ab about that in terms of how to make things consistently easier, consistently better and and what types of thinking you need around that. And there was, um, there was a, the CEO, CEO of Rippling actually that I was recently listening to where he was talking about first principle thinkers versus clear thinking. And I think he broke it down really well where he talked about, you know, first principle thinkers can really kind of break down those, those problems to that atomic level and really kind of work backwards and build, build off of that. And and they understand the, the kind of why. And then the clear thinkers may not have all that first principle thinking, but they, they learn through a lot of at-bats and a lot of experience. But they're, and, and so a lot of their, their experience is sort of, or the, a lot of what they do in their work is based on a lot of their experience. Yeah. And he talks about how you, you need both of these people in your organization. Yeah. And some of the, and, and we've all seen it, we've hired that one person that has no experience, <laughs> but absolutely crushes it. Yeah. They crush the work. Yeah. And they get it. They just get just it. Just give me the at bat. <laughs> yeah. And then, there, and then there's some other folks that they've made more mistakes and they've, they've sort of learned through a lot of experience and maybe they're not the deepest uh, uh, first principle thinker, but they know how to understand all the possible scenarios yeah. and they sort of know what can go wrong in this direction, in this direction. They're, they're very good at thinking deeply. And so for me, some of the stuff that I've learned recently was how, how do we think about hiring as it relates to clear thinking versus first principle thinking. And which thinker are you? I would like to think I'm a, uh, <laughs> I, would, I, I would say I'm probably more of a first principle thinker okay. than I am uh, a, clear think, like a clear thinker. I think that um, I don't, I've, I'm, I've only been a CEO once, yeah. so my at-bats are limited, yeah. but I... I, I like to feel like I can break down a problem in, into its small levels and work backwards and, and you know, figure out what's, how, how we can solve that in the best and easiest way. But um, y again, you need all types of people in your organization. And uh, for me, it's been a lot of just reflecting on, on that comment and thinking through what types of positions best are best suited for these types of thinkers as it relates to some of the new products we're rolling out, connecting parts of the journey, making it simple, easy for these operators. So that's. So we're very fortunate that Entrepreneur gives us this stage, you know, thanks to Toast and Ovation to allow us to do stuff like this at the National Restaurant Association show. We have so many restaurant people all over the globe that tune in. What kind of advice would you give to somebody that's listening to this in 2024 and beyond? As a, as a restaurant operator? As a restaurant operator. Well, I think, that's, I think there's no better time to be an operator than right now. There's a ton of amazing products out there. Uh, 
I would always encourage uh, folks to do their homework, do their research, find out what their core needs are, and look at addressing those as a first and primary motive. Uh, and really, because there's so many great products that work together alongside, whether it's point of sale, payroll, accounting, all these different uh, other software vendors, look at what integration really means in those, in those worlds, because the level and the depth of integration can mean different things to your experience. So I think look at look at what's out there and, and really spend some time to do some homework, but you're in sort of like the sea of some really great companies right now. So we're gonna put you on the hot seat. We believe in smartphone storytelling. We believe every single person that's listening can become their own media company. If a barbecue business can become a media business, anybody can do it. We need to know about your personal tech stack. So I need to know, are you an Android user or an iPhone user? I'm an iPhone user. And which version? Uh, I'm on like 13. Like I 13. I'm going on a 13. Okay. And <laughs> how many apps do you have on your phone? Oh man, how many do I have versus what I use? Yes. It's like a good question. But So I probably have like 40. 40? How many do you use? Probably five. What are those five? Oh, this is the hot seat. <laughs> um, okay, so I probably if if like it's like LinkedIn okay. is probably number one. LinkedIn, see that LinkedIn powerhouse on LinkedIn. Jordan's Link, a powerhouse. LinkedIn number on one. LinkedIn. That's smartphone power. That's smartphone. Do they have to be downloaded apps or ones that came on the phone? Uh, they can come on the phone. Okay. Yeah. No, that's the I mean, like the camera I'm, phone app. Is, yeah, yeah. Like WhatsApp is a, is another one okay. that I use a lot. Uh, same with Reddit. Okay. Um, what are you reading on Reddit? Is there some subreddit that I should? Oh, know the, about? you got to check out the Saskatoon subreddit, oh, Sean. Come on. Okay. Shout out to the yep. Saskatoon subreddit. Um, I'm trying to think of the other few. It's like, it's I'm, email. I'm, I'm probably boring. Gmail? Gmail. Oh, Gmail and Slack. Gmail and Slack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. How yeah. many emails do you get a day? Uh, probably 25. No. You get more than 25? Probably 25. No, I don't believe it. Well, like emails that I actually need to read and yes. respond to. Okay, yeah. Because like so there's the many, other yeah. the notifications. Yeah. Right? I don't count. But oh, do you, How many notifications do you have on your phone? Uh, probably like all my calendar notifications come in as emails. Like if, I, if we pulled up your phone, how many how many apps have notifications on them? Oh, let, let's take a guess here. Okay, let's do a gamble. What do you think? Uh, I say from your from your response to the email question, I'd say you have, I don't know, 2,000 emails unread. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. I am so I am a vigilant. I'm in, vigilant inbox I'm a, in, zero. My, in my inbox okay, zero. Inbox, and I'm an inbox I'm a, zero too, guy. By the way, like, I don't this know is that, the longest I'll, I'll go without having checked my. Email I don't know if it's a good thing, show. like to like yeah, no, because you start either. you start thinking as a checkbox and it's the same as text. Yes. Inbox, I have to read. I have to. I have to. Otherwise, it won't get to happen. And then everyone talks of these productivity podcasts. Are like, you know how to be productive. <laughs> To only do things that are important. Correct. And I'm here. I am checking here, off checking every off inbox. Like, oh god. What uh, what music app do you listen to? I'm on Spotify. You're on Spotify. Do you listen yeah. to music? Oh yeah. What? When you work out? What do you do? When I'm working out, when I, I I listen to music pretty much all the time. So like, working out, uh, driving. Podcasts on Spotify. Podcasts. I like in depth. Um, it's a, more of like a SaaS podcast. Um, uh, like the, like the daily Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, Google Maps, Google Maps. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So these are all these are all the important questions. These are Photo, these... photos or videos. Oh, that's a tough one. I got a mix of both. A mix of both. I, I it's pretty How balanced because I got phone? kids. I got a six and a How four many? year old. How many photos? Yeah. So this is important questions. Let me see here. So we do the we do the real. Can work. you even see like oh yeah thirteen thousand photos? Oh, I guess only sixteen hundred videos. So but we need 13,000 13,000 yeah. is good. It's a lot. Good. It's a good dad. I think I, I think this goes back to 2015 it's or something. <laughs> so it's a good dad. Thir yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys listening to the show. Jordan, it's always a pleasure to be a partner, to see what you guys are building. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you're here at the show, at the National Restaurant Association show, your boots on the ground, your teams on the ground, all of the work that you guys do for the industry. You have an incredible marketing team. I'm holding up a newspaper. Yes, new media is holding up old media, but it doesn't matter how the message is conveyed. What is important is the content. And the content inside here is top notch. So thank you for what you do. What's the best way for people to learn more about Seven Shifts and connect with you? So the best way is to uh, visit sevenshifts.com, seven S-H-I-F-T-S.com. 
If you want to connect with me, my email is jordan at sevenshifts.com. Uh, you know what? You can even text me. Oh yeah. 306 900 2398. Wow, you just there, did, I did that. It. He just I did, did it. that. He I might regret it. that. No, no. I'm he okay. Won't regret it. Okay. I'm okay. Let's, I'm okay. Let's get him a thousand we'll see what text messages. So, a I'm thousand gonna, restaurant operators. I'm going to be inbox zero in my text <laughs> message. Zero. Don't worry. It's fantastic. We appreciate you guys listening. If you want to connect with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. At any platform, I'm weirdly available. We want to hear your story. Please uh, follow Seven Shifts, follow the work that Jordan's doing, reach out to the team. They are amazing at what they do. And uh, we appreciate you guys for, for listening to the show. We'll catch you next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. If you want to get in touch with me, I am weirdly available at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. Cali Barbecue Media has other shows. You can check out Digital Hospitality. We've been doing that show since 2017. We also just launched a show, Season 2, Family Style, on YouTube with Toast. And if you are a restaurant brand or a hospitality brand and you're looking to launch your own show, Cali Barbecue Media can help you. Recently, we just launched Room for Seconds with Greg Majewski. It is an incredible insight into leadership, into hospitality, into enterprise restaurants and franchise, franchisee relationships. Take a look at Room for Seconds. And if you're ready to start a show, reach out to us, be the show.media. We can't wait to work with you.